Hey everybody, welcome back, and if you're new, thanks for stopping by. I know it's been a slow couple of months of uploads, but I've been working on getting a new job and took a little break from editing videos to do some things around the house, and it seems like my car's engine is about to grenade. On top of all of that, when I was recording with my cell phone, I have been having audio issues with it glitching out and stuff, and the other one I used just had issues with stopping recording randomly and audio issues as well. However, I have purchased a new camera, which I will reveal in an upcoming video, since the next few videos I had already recorded with my cell phone. Anyway, I am back, and I got the job, which I'll tell you more about that in a later video. But I will be back to uploading more videos frequently, as I have some planned out for the future. Today, as you already know by the title, I'm going to be making some changes to my sim rig I built in a previous video. The reason I want to make these changes is I want to sit closer to my monitors and a bit higher up. As well, I want to mount the seat a little better and just improve things overall. This is how my sim rig currently sits. The seat is in a fixed position and I cannot angle my side monitors in any closer, so it's like looking at an extra wide monitor that is barely curved. Also, my wiring is a bit disorganized and I kind of just wrap things around and really didn't take the time to do some wire management. I'd like to get an angle on the side monitors to at least 45 degrees, possibly more depending on how much I can modify the sim rig. Also, the current way I have the seat mounted, I am using these aluminum plates on all four corners which I have circled here. They stick out pretty wide, they are also very sharp as they weren't cut well or grinded down. Kind of got lazy there. Anyway, I've cut myself once or twice not paying attention getting in and out of the seat and just bumping into the rig. Also, I don't want anyone else to get hurt if they bump into it. So, let me get this torn down, then I'll go over how I plan to mount the seat and move things around to sit closer to my monitors. Now I have it torn down. Well, mostly. I might have to take things a bit further, but I'll figure that out when I get to that point. Firstly, the bottom of the seat is quite rusty, and I can only blame myself as I didn't take care of this when I got the Miata seat and installed it. I was in a bit of a rush to get it back together, so I could participate in some races and eye racing. So, I will be grinding the rust off and giving it a coat of paint before I reinstall it. Before that, here is my plan to mount the seat, since I cannot find the seat rails I got with the seat. I have these old garage door mounting brackets, and have just enough to fit on either side. I'll mount the seat to these with some bolts, and then mount the L brackets to some wood on the rig itself. I know I said I didn't like the seat being in a fixed position, but this is what I have for now since I cannot find those seat rails. So, I'll try and figure something out to get the seat moving. So at the time I filmed that last little bit, I actually found the seat rails, and I'd like to use these, but there's one big problem here. It has the mounts, it slides forward and backwards, no problem. This is just disconnected on this side. The big problem is, the guy I got the seat from gave me the driver's side rail for the passenger seat he gave me. So, the welds here or this whole section i should say actually runs into the side of the seat where the handle is to adjust the back so what i would need to do is actually grind out these welds here here and here but there's another weld back here on this side and as you can see this is all the way as far back as i can go i can't slide this anymore I could probably try to get it to come all the way off. I'm just worried if I get it all the way off, I'm not going to be able to get it all the way back on.
was unable to cut the welds out, so I just ended up cutting the entire side of the bracket off on the seat rail, and it should work. Also, off camera, I did the grinding on the bottom of the seat and gave it a couple coats of paint to make it look nicer, even though I'll never see it unless I take it off the rig again. Also, I gave the rails a bit of paint, just for aesthetics, and to clean them up a bit. Now, it's time to see if these will mount up without issue, and interfering with the handle to adjust the seat back. So, let me get to that. So, as you can see, this is where we're at with construction of this, or rather, reconstruction. What I'm going to do next, now that I've got the mounts on the C here, is mount some wood to either end, and then that way I can mount that to the rig itself. Um, pretty much, this is where I used to have it mounted. And it was just kind of mounted to some other 2x4s. This time I'm going to take this, put it across here, pretty much even, so I'm going to cut this about right here. And then drill some holes through, put some bolts in and mount it. And once I do that, I need to figure out how to mount this to there. And how I'm going to do that. So come along for the ride because I'm not exactly sure what, how I'm going to do this just yet. And I need to find another piece of wood. So hopefully I have one laying around. So stick around. Now that the seat is bolted to these 2x4s, it's time to measure out and cut a couple pieces of wood to complete the frame. Since I want to conserve wood, I'm going to steal the upright on the rig for the H shifter, as I will be moving that to another one. frame is completed, so now I just need to test that I can move the seat using the seat rails. So all checks out, and now it's time to figure out how I'll be mounting it to the rig itself, but first I'll need to install the steering wheel to see where everything's at. mounted up well kind of I need to measure it about a million times and make a few adjustments just to make sure it's equal on both sides I could use the level but I like making things complicated so let me get this leveled out and we can move on to the next step it feels sturdy enough to me and that ain't going nowhere so, now it's time to mount the seat up, and to do that, I'll need to add some legs to the frame here, and then get it screwed onto the rig. With those on, I need to make sure it is in the correct height and position. I know, I know, it's in a bit of a precarious position right now. But I really need to make sure before making the final mounting that this will work for me. Also, since the legs are angled the way they are, 
I need to make some cuts to them to make them level with the crossbeams on the bottom of the rig. First though, I need to move the crossbeam that the front legs will mount to, that way they aren't hanging halfway off the beam and will be more secure. Now that that's loose, I can slide it up a couple inches. Honestly, not sure of the exact measurement since I just eyeballed it, but should be enough for the front legs to mount to. Got that secured, so now I need to cut the legs on the seat frame so they will sit flush. To do that, I'm just going to use a piece of plywood to lay flat next to it and draw a line on the legs where I need the cuts. Then I will rinse and repeat for the other side, then go make those cuts. Now that those are cut, time to secure them back to the seat frame. With the leg secured back to the seat frame, you can see how it will look before I secure it to the rig. Well, my clothes changed for the third, possibly fourth time now, but it's because I took a bit of a break to get around a disc golf in. But now I can finally mount the seat frame to the rig and then get the seat on the frame and I'll be ready to race. Now that it is all together, I just need to give it a quick test to make sure everything still works and is where I want it. I actually forgot that I still had to mount the H shifter. Technically I don't need it, but I like to row through gears in certain games. So let me get that on and then I can actually say it is ready to race. Here it is, finally completed. All I need to do is just a little bit of wire management, but I'll do that off screen, and then we can go test it out and see how it is racing. So I tore down the rig again after a little bit of testing. Well, just the steering wheel, but I had to change the plans on how I wanted it set up and how the pedals are mounted. In order to change how the pedals are mounted, I raise the floor in the front where my feet normally rest. The seat is still in the same position, but I wasn't quite happy with the position of everything and wanted to make a few additional changes. Also, moving the monitors to my desk each time I wanted to race was getting a bit tedious, and also the angles still weren't where I wanted them on the side monitors. Firstly, I need to secure the newly raised floor to the rig before I move on to the next steps. Next, I need to tie together the two uprights for the steering wheel so they are more secure, and it will also come into use for another addition of my rig, which I'll show you in just a few. So here are the pedals after I made some changes. Instead of using the G29 base, I mounted them directly to a piece of plywood so I could invert them. I didn't record that process, but I'll give a better look once I'm finished. When I tested out the inverted pedals the first time, I used a 2x4 at an angle to mount them, and I like them being inverted, but with the 2x4s on either side, I had nowhere to rest my left foot but on the clutch, which was not good at all. So I have a better idea. I took this piece of scrap wood, which I previously used to mount the DX racer seat I was using originally, so I could mock up how I wanted to mount the pedal board to the rig and also get the angle correct. Once I had the pedals at the angle I wanted them, I made an angle cut to the scrap wood and gave it another test. Since I got the angle correct on the first try, just need to mark up where I'll be making a vertical cut to the board and finalize the mock-up of the brackets I wanted to use. Since the final mock-up of the bracket checks out and looks like it'll support the pedals well, I can now go cut two new brackets from a fresh piece of plywood. Here are the new brackets, and I think they should work perfectly where they are right now. Just need to secure them to the rig at the base, then I can get the wheel installed. Actually, I'm just kidding. There'll be no way this would be comfortable, and I only made them this tall, so I could lower them little by little, 
to get the height of the pedals correct. I'd rather them be too tall and have to trim a little off rather than recut the brackets altogether. Now that I've got them trimmed down a bit, it's time to give them another test. However, I still think these are a bit too tall for my liking, so I'll cut them a bit more. This time, I only trimmed about an inch or two off the brackets, as my last cut was almost to the height I wanted the pedals at. Now it feels perfect. However, I cannot press down on the pedals since it's not secure to the rig, and I'll just push it off the back there. But, since I'm happy, I can get them secured. First though, let me get the wheel installed with the new piece of wood. Then, I'll secure everything to the rig. With the wheel secured to the rig again, I need to give it another quick test before I secure the pedals to the base. Now that I have the pedals secured to the base, it's time to build the uprights, which will not only support the pedals further, but as well will be supporting the tabletop, which I will be mounting my monitor mounts to. Next up, I need to add some beams from the steering wheel uprights over to the pedal uprights. This will further secure the wheel supports, the pedal supports, and will be what holds up the tabletop for my monitor mounts. So, I went ahead and mounted the tabletop as well, as you can see here. Kind of looks like my original rig, but this time I'll be using the tabletop for my monitors, unlike the last time. Let me give this another quick test to make sure everything is still in the correct position, then I'll get the monitors mounted. I told you that would be a quick test. Anyway, it feels comfortable and sturdy to me, so now it's time to get the monitors mounted to the rig. Real quick, I just had to show you the mess I made. Well, it's mostly because I pulled the wires from under my desk since I'll be running three new HDMI cables from the PC to the rig, and I'll only have one monitor on my desk. I probably didn't need to pull all the cables I did from underneath my desk, but I felt like rolling around in cables for a few hours while I play Cable Management 2022. To mount my monitor stands, I had to drill this hole in the tabletop, then put the bolt through the bottom end of it and secure it to the monitor stand itself. I actually had to do this once on each side of the tabletop, since each stand can only hold maximum two monitors, and there will be three on here. But at least now, I can tighten the bolt to the stand and get the third monitor placed. Might be asking right now, why didn't he show the process for mounting all three monitors to the rig? Well, somebody didn't press the record button on the camera during that process. I'm not going to name names. Well, oh, okay, it was me. I could blame a camera malfunction, but it was totally my fault. Anyway, I am now mounting my new monitor to my desk. It is a 32 inch 1440p LG Ultra Gear monitor with a refresh rate of 165 Hz and also has HDR10 built in. On top of that, it also says it's compatible with Nvidia G Sync. So, sounds great to me. This will be a perfect monitor for my desk for FPS games and any other non racing games, as I really never used all three monitors for anything other than racing. So, once I'm done mounting this, play some more Cable Manager 2022. It will be finally ready to race.
since I didn't get a better close-up of this and kind of some of the things, here it is as it sits completed. So you see I got my computer over here, the new monitor, which if you want a review on that, let me know. I can do that later on. Uh, new 70-inch Vizio TV because my 65-inch blew up and it was the screen so I couldn't really do much because a new screen is like 600 bucks and a new TV was close to the same price. But as you can see, seats all mounted. Ignore the carpet. I was going to put carpet down here, change my mind. So that's how I have it set up here. If we come around to the back, you can see I have it on the same moving monitor arms that I had it on my desk. Just because I had these before. All the wires are mounted back there. And then you can see along the wall back there how I have my HDMI run. And let me go down here. That's how I have my pedals mounted for a better look. I'll kind of go into that later. Still need to vacuum a little bit more. So anyway, how I did these is I took the base that the Logitech pedals came on and I actually basically lined these up kind of in the same format, measured them out, made sure they're equal, drilled holes for the wires, had to remove the wires here and feed them through the hole in order to get them on. I mounted them up, got my angles correct, you saw that earlier, and made my own mounts. And they're mounted here, and they're very, very solid. So, and I'll get you a picture of the backside, how that looks here in a moment. One other thing I forgot to mention, the way my desk is set up, it's absolutely perfect to put my mouse here. And I made myself a little keyboard tray, so... It's not fixed to it or anything, but if I need to move this for any reason, it's just hard to do with one hand, I can fold it down just like so, and it sits like that. It's a little uh, unstable right now, but I'll fix that later, but it locks in place. Just have a hinge like that, so you just pull this up and fold it down. So, put my keyboard back up. Put a little USB hub on the side. And one other feature, sorry for any banging, I'm getting new roof today, is if I want to use all my monitors, I can just move that one and still have access to use them all. So here's a look at the backside, kind of at a weird angle here. You can see how it's wired up. I have a power strip on the back for all the power, ran all my wires, kind of hit them underneath here. I don't know if you can see that or not, but they're all ran underneath, that way they're out of my way. And finally, I can show it in action. I forgot to save the replay from this practice, so I muted the audio since all you can hear is the wheel and the pedals making noise. And you're really not missing much, as the MX-5 just sounds like an angry bee. While recording this, I actually encountered someone that either forgot I was next to them, or never saw me come up and get on the side of them. Either way, you can see how easy it is for me to just grab the mouse and review the replay to see what happened. I really didn't consider where I put the mouse when I was figuring out the placement of the rig, and it sort of just worked out this way. I also forgot to show the tablet mount that was 3D printed by a friend, that way I could mount it to an additional monitor arm that I wasn't using. It's only half completed as there's nothing holding it on the top just yet, as that is still being printed, but the tablet can rest in there for now, so I have some additional data while I'm racing, and it's not cluttering up my view. Lastly, I just wanted to show how quick it is to swap between race mode and FPS mode, or just watching YouTube. Quick flip of the monitor, and I'm good to go. It takes the same amount of time to swap the other way around, so it's really no big deal. If you are planning to make your own sim rig out of plywood or any other way, yes, it does take time, a lot of measuring, and definitely some patience. But once you get it right, you will really enjoy it. It only took me three rebuilds to get mine where I wanted it, 
but well worth it in the end. I have been racing so much more often with how easy it is for me to move over and start a race now. I even have my PS4 hooked up to the central monitor and use a KVM switch for the wheel, keyboard, and headphones so I can just press a button to switch between the PC and PS4. If you are trying to build a similar rig and curious how I built the lower frame, you can check out my previous video linked above and below to give you an idea. I also linked the monitor arms and the hinge I use for the keyboard stand down in the description below. That's going to be it for today's video. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you know where to leave them. Also, if you could share this video and hit that like button, it greatly helps me out. I thank you again for stopping by. Hope you have a great rest of your day, and take care.